Hi everybody. Today in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to add movement to our marble. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right. So the very first thing I wanted to do in this video, just because it was bothering me from the last video, is I want to head into our player and I want to head into our camera container script. And I just want to change this 0.3 number right here in the physics process. And that's because this is called the magic number. And if we look up what a magic number is, a magic number is a numeric literal that is used in the code without any explanation of its meaning. And that's bad because the use of magic numbers makes programs less readable and hence more difficult to maintain and update, which is uh, something we want to avoid. A for our future self and B for uh, any collaborators if there were potential collaborators on the project. So I'm just going to turn that into a uh, variable and we can call it a uh, smooth camera tolerance and make it a float and set that to 0.3 and now we can just throw that in there. And so uh, now we can move on to the marble's movement. And before we get started on any scripting, I just want to change some of the settings in our rigid body uh, just to be more uh, applicable for our marble's movement. And the first thing I want to do is change our gravity scale to 0.9. And this is just to make the game feel a tiny bit more floaty, which I think is a bit more fun for this kind of game. And it also uh, helps us go up ramps a little better and now the next thing I want to do is uh, select this physics material override and create a new physics material and what this does is it adds a little bit more attributes for us to mess around with and they're all pretty good to start with besides this bounce and I just want to add some bounce to our ball so we can do a little bit extra fun movement stuff that those uh, marble games have and finally, I want to head down to our linear velocity tab, or linear, yeah, linear velocity tab, expand it, and change this dampening to 0.8. And this is just because uh, with the way our script is going to be made, if we didn't, if we had our dampening set to zero, the ball would never stop. It would just continue, continually move. But yeah, that's, that's our settings for our ball. So now we can go ahead and attach our script to the marble. And this is a fine spot for us in the player folder. So I can just create it. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to create some export variables. Uh, the first one we can call movement speed. And this is just going to uh, be how fast our ball can move. And this can be a float. And a good speed I've found you can mess around with this how you'd like but this is a good speed I found at 385 and uh, the other export variable we wanted to make is a max uh, velocity and this is just to make sure that our um, ball doesn't move towards infinity and it, the speed can actually get clamped and have a max speed and we'll make that a float and we'll set it to 7.5 and so now we can get started on our movement itself. So the very first thing I want to do is take out these functions, for now at least. And I want to work in the physics process function just because um, that's our, our marble is using physics to move. So we want to make sure that we're handling the movement inside the physics process. Otherwise, if we used it in the other process, um, we might get some weird wonky kind of movement. And so what we want to do now is we can, we can use a movement function every single frame of the physics process. But it says function movement is not found in base self, and that's because we haven't defined the function yet. And so we can call it movement. 
And what we actually want to do is we want to pass this uh, delta into the movement to make sure that uh, it's time dependent. And so now we can get started. And actually, we have to do one more thing, and that's we can uh, head into the project settings. And then we want to go to the input map tab. And this is essentially going to let us uh, map out our own inputs. So we can go ahead and write a forward input, a backward input, a left, and a right. So now we have our actions uh, labeled, but we don't have uh, what the actual input is. So we're gonna click on this plus. So for forward, I'm gonna do W. So I'm gonna press W, then press OK. Backward, I'm gonna do S, press OK. Left, I'm gonna press A, OK, and right D, OK. And so now with those functions, we can, or with those uh, inputs, we can start defining some variables to get a reference to those inputs. So the first one we're gonna do is uh, forward input or F input. And that is gonna be equal to input dot get action strength. And we're gonna do backwards minus, and we're just gonna copy this But rather than backward, we're going to do forward. And what this get uh, action raw strength is doing for us essentially is it's uh, if we're pressing the button, uh, this this right one will be the a plus one, and this uh, left one will be a minus one. So basically, if we press backward, our uh, F input will equal negative one. If, if we press forward our F input will equal positive one. And then we can kind of translate that into movement later on. And so now we need to do that for our horizontal input. And what I'm actually just gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this and paste this and change this from right to left. And this is just has to do with the way our camera is. Um, you can try out flipping these around and see what happens. Uh, it's always it's always a good idea to mess around with this kind of stuff, especially if you're a beginner. So I would just suggest if if things don't make sense to you, uh, just start just start mixing the, all these words around and see what's happening and start experimenting with what you're doing. But now we can go ahead and uh, move forward, and I'm gonna make a new variable and call it camera transform and this is going to get the transform data of our uh, camera but we first need to get a reference to that camera so I'm gonna do that control drag trick I taught you in the last video and get a reference to that camera so now we can do camera 3d dot get camera transform and so now we have access to the camera's uh, location, rotation, and scale data. And we have to create a few more variables, one called relative camera direction. And so basically, um, if you can imagine our camera, right? Uh, I think if I spin this around really quick, it might be a little easier to understand. Oops. Well, that's okay. So if you can imagine this camera, right? It has a forward axis, okay? And so we want to we want to get that camera's forward axis because remember when the game starts uh, and we're moving around the camera and all that, uh, the camera's axis might be facing this way this way this way you know but we always want to get that forward axis for the marble to go uh, towards right so what we want to do is we want to get that relative camera direction and we just like how we have uh, our horizontal and forward 
component split we also want to do that for this and what we want to do is oh, we also want to make sure that we define what component that is we can get that negative camera transform dot basis dot z dot normalized and this this is a bit I would say a bit of a more advanced uh, function but I'll just tell you this for now and I'll provide some resources in the description to kind of describe what this basis is but what I want to say is if you want to make a third person game you're gonna want to know more about what this basis is I'm not gonna explain it just cuz uh, I want to get the video to move forward but what I'm trying to say is understand this basis if you want to make a third person 3d game anyways now we can um, split that into the Z for a horizontal or into the X so we can handle the horizontal input so we're just gonna flip the Z from X to X and now we can start combining this relative camera and this input and kind of hook them together so we're gonna do create two more uh, component variables and we're gonna call the first one direction F for the forward component and we're gonna multiply our F input times uh, our negative relative camera direction and now what I'm kind of realizing is if we're just gonna do two negatives I think we can just take out the negatives right and so now we're gonna make a new variable and call it direction dot H for the horizontal component and we're just gonna do that same thing and let me make sure these are so for the forward we're gonna use the Z and for the horizontal we're gonna use the X and finally uh, we are going to apply some forces with these directions because uh, the marble itself needs to actually have forces applied to it in order for our movement to happen so we're going to use a built-in function that the rigid body comes with and it's called apply central force and you can imagine this as like an invisible uh, entity like kind of pushing our rigid body and we're just going to do our direction F times our movement speed times Delta and if you can mess around with this if you take out the Delta you can see what happens but that's what I mean is if we don't use Delta we'll have some wonky movement but now we just want to do that same thing for our horizontal And so this should be our basic movement script. And I actually forgot to do one thing and that's clamp our velocity. And you guys, if any of you guys know in the description, um, I've tried to use this clamp, uh, but it's not working for some reason. So what we have to do is we have to write, I. I'm going to write if linear velocity dot X is greater than our max velocity then we want to send set that linear velocity dot X to that max movement speed so basically this just means if our linear velocity dot X ever goes over that max velocity it's just gonna it's just gonna clamp it down and set it back down to that max velocity value and so now we just got to do that three more times for all the other directions so I'm just gonna copy and paste and I'm just gonna put some negatives in front of these so we can do it in the opposite direction and we also want to do it to our Z 
axis right because we have the forward and horizontal so we're going to keep this as a positive these next two and then we're going to turn these next ones into negatives and what we also need to do excuse me is um in our every in our second and fourth uh if statements we need to make sure that we set our operator to a less than rather than a greater than all right and so now i think we can go ahead and give our game a test yep and so here we have it we have our movement and for some reason i don't have my texture on my marble so i just want to go ahead and throw that on really quick Sorry about that. So now we can actually see it rolling. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. And in the next video, we're going to work on our jump for our marble. So stay tuned.